everybody, I'm Charlie from The Knit Edit and I'm going to take you step by step through how you can knit your very own Jasper Jumper, which is my brand new pattern. It's a super simple, straightforward um, raglan in the round uh, top down jumper. So it has these lovely balloon sleeves and a lovely folded double neck. Um, so some lovely techniques to show you in this video. It's also a great project if you want to use up all your scraps. Um, to follow the video, you're going to need a copy of the pattern, uh, which I will link to in the description. So you'll be able to get your hands on all the information you need to follow along. Um, and without further ado, let's cast on. <laughs> So first off, you're going to want to pick a colour scheme. I've gone for a really fun, bright, poppy, rainbowy kind of colour scheme. I wanted to use up all of these um, ends of colourful yarn that I have lying around and do something with them. Um, but it would look amazing in anything. You could knit it in one solid colour, you could knit it in pastels, neutrals, monochrome, uh, whatever you fancy. So yeah, let your imagination go crazy with it. So the first step is to cast on um, and we'll be starting by casting on with the neckline. This is a one by one double folded over neck. Um, so to make sure the cast on is stretchy and can fit over your head, we're going to do a special kind of cast on where you're using your uh, two needles. So the 4.5 mil and a 6 mil needle and you'll be casting on over both of these, and so that makes the cast on edge nice big loopy stitches that can stretch to fit over your head. Um, so grab the first two yarns that you want to use and we'll start casting on. So you can really cast on using any sort of cast on you like. I like using um, a cable cast on. I think this is called a cable cast on anyway. Um, so I'm just going to do it like that, but it really doesn't matter. Just use. Um, whichever method you prefer and yeah just cast on the amount of stitches for your size in the pattern I'll just do a couple more stitches just so you can see kind of how the how the double needle cast on works feel for that. Okay, and then I'll meet you right back here once you've done your cast on. Okay, so I've got all of my cast on stitches ready to go. Um, I've taken out my 6mm needle that I was using to cast on with. And from now on, we're just going to be working on these 4.5mm needles or whichever size that you need to get the right tension is totally fine. Um, and just one little trick that I'm going to recommend that you do is um, cast on one extra stitch. So you'll have your number of cast on stitches plus one extra that we're just going to use to join the, join the round so that there's not a gap. Um, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Okay. Now also, because I've got quite a long cable and my stitches don't come all the way round, I'm going to work using a magic loop, which is a really useful trick if you don't have the correct sized cable. You can just take some extra length out and work in the round normally. Um, so what you need to do is just sort of halfway through your stitches, pull the magic loop out to create the right size so that your stitches can join and then make sure your stitches aren't twisted so just go around and make sure before we join that they're all facing upwards yeah we're good to go so yeah your magic loop will look like this and as we go around, I'll show you how you can keep the magic loop moving each row. Okay. So you're probably wondering what we're going to do with that extra stitch that I made you cast on. So we're just going to knit the first stitch and 
pass that extra stitch over and that stops you getting gappy knitting and what we're also going to do is just add in a stitch marker here so that we can keep track of our rounds and know how much we've knitted okay so stitch marker in and then we're just going to keep going in a one by one rib so that's purl one knit one and repeat And don't forget, as you go round and you're working your knitting for the jumper, don't forget to change colours as you go. So I won't give away all the details here because you have to buy the pattern to find out how to do the whole technique, but um, I'll show you how to swap one colour out, leave about three, four centimetres of a tail, and then add in your new one. I'm going to add in this pink and then just tie a nice sturdy knot. You can deal with the ends later or you can do as Larka Bagger says and just tie knots. <laughs> Don't worry about them. Um, so yeah, that's nice and secure. Tie it off again. I think lots of people worry that the knots are going to come undone, but they don't. <laughs> They're fine. And then you can just keep going and knit with your new end of yarn. So that's how it looks with a little knot in the back and you can just continue with those two strands. So I'll see you in nine centimetres time. Okay, it's a new day and I've got my neck ribbing nine centimetres here all finished and I had a lot of fun kind of changing colours as I went, adding in some texture. Um, so now I'm going to show you how to fold over the neckband to get that nice folded double neck that we're looking for. So you're going to finish working your rib, your last round of rib for the neckline when you get to your stitch marker and then just pass that along. We'll use that later and we're going to fold our neck. We're still working on our 4.5 mil needles. And now we're going to knit every stitch on this needle. And every second stitch, we're going to knit into the back to hold it in that folded shape. So I'll show you how we do that. Can knit the first one. And then this one, we're going to pick up the stitch from the back. So follow that stitch all the way down and knit into the bottom here. So we'll be knitting through both of these. And there we go. That's our first folded stitch. So again, I'll show you some more so you can get the hang of it. Knit this one as normal. Then this one. We're going to follow it all the way down the back to the bottom here. Make sure you're knitting straight down one stitch. So through this loop. And through this loop. And there we go, second folded stitch, knitting one as normal, and then again following it down through this loop at the bottom, oh. there we go. And this is very forgiving, like you don't have to be super neat. 
because um, it's going to be in the inside of the neck anyway, you won't see this edge. But it's nice to keep it nice and straight so that the neck sort of sits nicely and doesn't get twisted. So I'll show you one last time. Knit that one normally. And then knit through this loop. And then both of them off the needle. So you're going to do that for all of your stitches all the way around the neckband, folding it all up until we get right back here to our little stitch marker at the end of the, the end of the round. So I'll meet you back there. Okay, we're back at our stitch marker. So we've completed the round and we have our lovely folded neck finished and ready to go. Uh, this is what... Oh. <laughs> This is what the reverse looks like. So this will be the inside neck. And on the outside, it's just this invisible fold for the join. So it's gonna look really nice. Um, the next few rows might twist your brain a little bit if you're not used to knitting in the round. Um, but don't worry, I'm gonna explain everything as we go. What we need to do is begin the shaping to form the raglan seams. Um, and we're going to place our stitch markers as we go. But at the same time, we also need to work some short rows to make the front neck drop lower than the back neck. Um, so there'll be four of those, uh, but don't worry, I got you covered. So from now on, now that we've finished the neck trim, we're going to be using our six mil needles, or of course you can use the size that you need to get the right tension. Um, so we're going to be working from the 4 mil, 4.5 mil to the 6 mil in this round. So we can start our, our stitch markers right here. So holding on to that. We're going to knit the first one. And then we'll do a yarn over from the back of the needle. Then place your stitch marker, then knit one, and then do one more yarn over. And we're gonna repeat exactly the same for every stitch marker as we go. So it will be yarn over, place the stitch marker, knit one, and then another yarn over and then you'll knit the amount of stitches uh, listed in the pattern for your size. Um, the sleeve segments for all sizes are exactly the same so this first segment is a sleeve segment so everybody is going to knit 15 and then we're going to place our second stitch marker, marker number two. So just knitting normally onto those six mil needles. And don't feel bad if you mess this up the first time around. I've already messed it up and filmed it and I had to go again. <laughs> so everybody makes mistakes. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Great. So, what do we do? We yarn over, place markers. You'll notice that I'm using markers that are all different colours as well, just help me differentiate between each section, can make things a bit easier. Knit one and then yarn over again. So you can just see we've got the, the yarn over there, stitch marker, knit one and another yarn over. And now we're onto the back section. So again it'll have a certain amount of stitches for your size that you're going to knit and then we'll place the center back marker so we keep losing track so 
seven and eight. And the centre back marker is just a bit different. We don't increase around this one. This one's just going to be used as a counter. So we'll be able to count the amount of rows that we've done by this centre back marker. So as you're going through the rounds, you won't increase around this. You'll just pass it and keep going. Okay, and that comes to the end of our back piece. So you can see how that centre back marker is right smack in the middle, just where we need it to be. Um, and we can place our fourth stitch marker. So we're going to yarn over, place the marker, knit one, and yarn over again. And then this section will be our second sleeve. So 15 stitches for everybody. And if you're working in a magic loop, you might just have to do what I'm doing and sort of keep your needles organised as you go. Let's see how many stitches did I do. So now we can place our fifth and final stitch marker. So again, it's a yarn over, adding in a gold one this time. Then we can knit one and yarn over again. Now, okay, so we've just placed our fifth and final stitch marker. Um, so you can see we've got five stitch markers in place to separate the different segments that we're working with. We've got the two sleeves to the side here, and this will be the front neck, this will be the back neck where we have that center back marker. Okay, so don't knit any further. What we're gonna do now is start doing our short rows. So we need to just do four short rows so that the back neck sits up higher and the front neck sits down lower with a bit of a drop so that it's more comfortable and easy to wear. So what we do once we've placed our fifth stitch marker, we've got that yarn over, so knit two more stitches. In the pattern it says three stitches, but... um the yarn over counts as a stitch. And then we're gonna turn the work. So the wrong side is facing you. And we're just gonna purl all the way up until after the first stitch marker. So all the way around here, we're gonna purl until we get back to the front neck. Okay, I'll meet you there. And before you start purling, make sure you pull this, this string extra tight <laughs> so that there's no holes in the front neck from where you've turned the work. Okay. When you come across the, um, the yarn overs, just purl, the, purl them in a kind of twisted way, I guess you'd call it. So you're purling this front front leg of the stitch so that it doesn't form like a lace hole. So 
So yeah, just purling that front leg of the stitch so it doesn't form a lace hole. And just keep going around, purling normally. Okay, so we're back at stitch marker one. We've, been, we've purled all the way from marker five, all the way back around here, over the back neck, back to the front. So what we're gonna do now, just using the stitch marker as a guide, um, and just twist those yarn overs again that are around it. We're gonna purl until seven stitches after the stitch marker with the yarn over counting as a, as a stitch. So pass the marker after this one and then yarn over as a stitch. So it's a bit tight on these needles still. <laughs> so one. two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to turn the work again. So the right side is facing us this time. Okay, and then pull that working yarn tight again so there's no holes and we're just going to come all the way back around do, 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 until stitch marker five and we're going to do exactly the same on this side coming to seven stitches after this marker knit wise and yeah, pull tight and as we go we're going to do what we did on the first round with the yarn overs as the increases. So we're going to get to the marker and before the marker, yarn over, pass the marker, knit one and then yarn over and keep knitting and you'll do that for every marker as you go so we're keeping the the raglan shaping going even as we're doing these short rows there's a lot of things to remember at once but it's okay it's only for four rows and then um it gets a lot easier <laughs> you can just go and do your own thing So this marker, get to the marker and we yarn over, pass the marker, knit one, yarn over and keep knitting. So it's essentially what we did as we were placing the markers but this time you just pass them onto the other needle. And as we're getting to this centre back marker, just bear in mind that you don't have to do any increases or any yarn overs, anything around it. This is just a placeholder marker so that we can keep track of the amount of rows that we've done. And it just marks the centre back for us. So all you need to do when you get to that one is just pass it to the other needle. Okay. 
And then again, we're just going to yawn over. Knit one, yarn over again, and keep going. And as you can see, we're nearly at that gold fifth marker, so I'll meet you there. Okay, so we're at that fifth marker. I've changed to a nice chunky pink yarn, so it's some texture in there. And we're just going to do the same that we did at all the other stitch markers, so yarn over, pass that marker, Knit one, another yarn over, and we're going to go to seven stitches, so knit six more, because that yarn over counts as a stitch. Okay, so we're seven past the marker now, and we're going to do just what we did before. Turn, so the wrong side of the work is facing you, and then we purl. Pull that tight, and we're going to purl all the way back to this first marker again, all the way around. And then we'll go three past this marker this time, including that yarn over. So one, two, three, and I'll meet you there. And then we can begin our regular shaping. The short rows will be done. Okay, here we are. That's the short rows finished with three rows, three stitches after our first stitch marker. And we can turn our work and continue as normal. You can see the raglan starting to form here. And here, this is how it should be looking. And if you look at those short rows and how it's kind of more knitting on the back, so the back neck will be up higher and let the front neck fall so it's easier to wear. So if we turn our work to face us, the right side faces us again, we can start um, just increasing normally, which is how we're going to work the rest of the body um, up until you've got the required amount of repeats. So we'll get to the stitch marker and we'll just do that yarn over past the marker, knit one and yarn over again. And just repeat that for every stitch marker all the way around until you get back here. Okay, so we're back at stitch marker one, our meeting spot, and we've completed one full round of uh, doing the yarn overs, the increases at the raglan seams. It's really fun to see how this piece is growing and you can see all the colours changing, I love it. Um, so I'll show you how to do the second row in the in the increase repeat. Make sure you're just pulling those yarns nice and tight so you don't get these holes where you've turned the work for the short rows. Okay, so the, um, the second row is just knitting every stitch until you get to these yarn overs at the markers and you'll just knit those twisted. So knitting that that left left arm of the stitch first, past the marker, knit one, and knit that left arm of the stitch first. And that means you won't get a lace hole, it just forms a kind of knit stitch there. Okay, I'll show you how to do that at the next marker, so you've got the hang of it. And then you've got your two repeat rows and you can just keep going, repeating those two rows until you've got the required number of repeats or stitches on your needle.
Okay, so, oh, so yeah, just knit that one. You can see there's a yarn over there. So just going in through the front, twisting it past the marker. And again, for this yarn over, in through the left of the front there and twist. Perfect. And you can keep working those two rounds, repeating one after the other um, until, like I say, you've got the right amount of stitches on your needle or um, count the amount of repeats you've done by the amount of holes on your raglan there. So you can see I've done three repeat rows because there's one, two, three little holes. So if you, if you get stuck, you can just count the holes on your raglan and it'll tell you how many you've done. Okay. Okay, it's another new day. Um, I've completed my raglan shaping now. So um, we've come to a point where we've completed the amount of shaping rows that it says in the pattern, and you can really start to see your raglan seam forming now. Um, and again, if you've lost track of how many rounds you've done, you can just count the holes next to the raglan seam, um, and that'll tell you how many rounds of shaping you've got. And we're back at stitch marker one, our meeting place. Um, and the last row, the last round that you should have done will have been the, the round two of the shaping where you knit every stitch and you knit the yarn overs twisted. So we've got um, a nice fresh round of knitting to work from. Um, and what we're gonna do now um, is split the side uh, sleeve sections off and keep those to knit later on a thread. And from here on, we'll just be working the body um, separately. So what we're gonna do, you can take off your stitch markers. You don't need those anymore. Just um, the one in the center back. And you're gonna take a thread and a darning needle and just place all of the stitches from uh, stitch marker one to stitch marker two onto a thread. And that will later become a sleeve. And then there. You don't have to use a thread if you have a large enough stitch holder. Totally fine to use that. Anything that just keeps those stitches safe and out of the way. I like using a thread because it's um it's light, it kind of doesn't get in the way, it's flexible. Sometimes stitch holders can be a bit rigid when you're trying to trying to knit in a different direction. Okay, last little bit. And okay, we're at stitch marker two. So that will be our first sleeve. So keep those out of the way for now. And then what we're going to do, just to bridge the gap between these two needles, so imagine this is going to be the underarm area. You can sort of see this is where the, the sleeve is going to come out. So the area here is the underarm. So we're just going to cast on stitches for the underarm. Your pattern will tell you exactly how many. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so just casting on stitches with your working yarn, real simple, creating a loop, and that makes a stitch. And we'll do that again. Don't do them too tightly, because you still want to be able to knit into them. Making a loop, and in. Okay, and just keep going until you have the number of underarm stitches for your size in the pattern. 
Okay, so we've got our freshly cast on stitches for the underarm. And this is our sleeve section, so just keep that out of the way. We're not working on those. And you can just start knitting. Just knitting every stitch. And this will create the body section. Pull that yarn nice and tight so there's no hole where you've cast on the new stitches. And this panel will eventually be our back panel. You can tell because we've got our stitch marker number three there at the centre back. So we're going to work all the way over here to this stitch marker, all the way across the back panel. And then we can split for the sleeve again. Okay, so we made it to this stitch marker. We can take that to one side now. We've got one more piece of thread with our darning needle. And we're going to place all of these stitches right up to this stitch marker on the thread for the sleeve. I'll show you a different view this time in case you've never done this before. Yeah, basically placing all of those stitches just as they are on the needle onto the thread. Okay, last little bit, and then we've got both of our sleeves split from the body. There we go. Lovely. So you can see our sleeve on the thread and we're going to do exactly the same as we did for the last sleeve and cast on those stitches for the underarm piece so again the pattern will tell you how many to do And again, we're just going to knit straight into that round. Pull that yarn nice and tight again. And there we have it. The sleeves are split off. Woo! And here's the finished result. So this is how your piece should look. I've just knitted a couple more rows um, after splitting the sleeves. So you can clearly see how the neckline is coming together, where the sleeves are going to be, and we'll be knitting down from here to form the body. So keep going, just knitting in the round, forming that body. Um, there's lengths in the pattern that you can follow, or if you'd like it to be a little bit longer, um, you can go ahead and add some extra length and just make it the length you want it to be. And um, I'll meet you when we've knitted the body and we're just about to start doing the rib. <laughs> Have fun! Hello, it's another lovely new day. Um, I spent last night working on the body of my jumper and here we are! 
This one has been so much fun. Uh, it's been super chilly, super cold here, so it's been so nice getting cozy in the evenings and working on this lovely jumper. Um, and I'm just loving the colours, how they're coming out. It's just so bright and tropical and sunny. It's giving me everything I need right now. Um, okay, so now that we've um, knitted the body, we just need to knit the rib that's going to be the hem along the bottom here. Um, and to do that, we're just going to switch to our 4.5 needles or whichever needles you've been using to get the correct tension for your ribbing. Um, and then we knit the rib, just however much it says in the pattern for your size. Um, and then we're going to meet back after knitting our one by one rib and just cast off and then the body will be done we can move on to those sleeves <laughs> so my ribbing is done <laughs> i have seven centimeters of rib nearly there all we need to do now is cast off um and i like to do an invisible cast off if you just want to cast off rib wise that's completely fine it's a lot quicker and a lot easier um, but I'll give you a quick tutorial on how to do an invisible cast off. I'm not the best at it. There's probably loads better tutorials out there, but I'll just show you what you need to do. Um, you need to leave a really long, <laughs> leave a really long strand of yarn and get your darning needle and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so we're at our centre back marker um that's where we finish the rib round and really to do an invisible rib cast off it's um it's just four moves so starting with a knit stitch is the first stitch on the needle and the first move is to come behind uh, in between the first and the second stitch and then you're going to go knit wise into this second stitch, the purl stitch. Knitwise through this first stitch, pull it nice and tight and then slide it off the needle. And now we're gonna do the same thing, just purling. So you'll go purl wise through the second stitch on the needle, nice and tight, pull all the yarn through, purl wise through the first stitch, there's so much yarn to pull through, <laughs> and then pull that stitch off. So then we start again, there's a knit stitch, so we do the knitting, so you come through, through the middle, and then knit wise through this stitch. Knit wise through the first stitch again. And that one comes off, pull everything tight. And then we can do purl wise again. So purl wise through the second stitch. Go purl wise through the first stitch. You can see how we get a nice rhythm going now. Pull that one off, and then we start knit wise again. So through the middle, uh, knit wise through that second stitch. knit wise through the first stitch and oh oh dear got my tail a bit caught that's okay it's all good <laughs> and then off so you can see how it leaves this lovely invisible kind of um it all fades into the rib edge um, which I really like. It's really worth just taking that little bit of extra time to get your cast off looking good. Um, and yeah, we just need to complete all the way around this round. 
and then we can start on the sleeves. The body will be completely done. So we've cast off, um, we've got our lovely invisibly cast off edge and that means the body panel is finished completely and we can move now on to working on these sleeves that we put on the thread a while back. Um, so I'm going to show you how to pick up all these stitches, pick up stitches in the underarm and then you've got a an amount of stitches that you can work on in the round to create your sleeve. So we're working back on our six mil needles again, or the needles you've been using to get the correct tension for your stocking stitch. And we're just gonna start these threads. I've got the right hand sleeve here, but it doesn't really matter. We're just gonna take all of these stitches straight off the thread and onto the needle. Don't need to do anything fancy, it's just sort of squishing them all on. <laughs> and if you're anything like me, you start getting excited at this point because um it's like halfway through, we're nearly done, we've just got the sleeves to do and you can really see how the jumper's coming together, how all the colours are working together and sort of what the fit's going to be like, how it's going to look, it's like a really exciting stage. Nearly picked up all of these. <laughs> Nearly dropped the camera. <laughs> Uh, just the last few ones to go. Okay, and now we get to do the lovely, satisfying thing of just, oh, last little one. Oops, on the end there. <laughs> oh my gosh, can't get it. <laughs> Come on. I can see you hiding in there. Okay, there we go. No stitch left behind. <laughs> um, now you get to see the lovely satisfying thing. You get to pull your thread all the way out. Now that those stitches are on the needle. Oh yeah. Nice. And then what we're going to do, we now need to pick up the stitches along this under, under sleeve area where we cast on stitches on the body. Um, so we're going to take some new yarn. I've already tied a slip knot in here. And we're just going to pick up stitches. It's um, a different number of stitches for each size. So double check what you've got for your size. And we're just going to pick them up, you can see here, just in the, in the knit stitches. So there's little loops between each stitch and that's where we're going to aim for. And we're going to put our needle. So starting with this, starting with the slip stitch. So needle in there, there should be one, two threads, so go under the second one needle in, pop our slip stitch on and just tighten it up a little bit 
There we go. And then we pull it out. And that's our first stitch. And then into the second one. Again, make sure you're going into the second under the second bit of yarn. Second stitch. And going in again. Yarn round and pull it back through. One more time. In there. Yarn round. Pull it back. And last one I'll show you. There we go. And then you're just going to do that and pick up stitches for your size all the way until you get to the end here and then you'll have your your stitches to work on for the sleeve and here we are i've picked up all my stitches we formed one big round all the way around the sleeve and on this underarm section and you can just continue knitting now all the way around these stitches knitting every stitch um, until you get to the length um, stated in the pattern for your size um, and I'll meet you there. <laughs> so I've had a chance to knit a little bit of the sleeve now um, and I'll just show you how to measure it because we're going to measure the length of the sleeve from the underarm area. Um, so yeah, not measuring it from the side neck or anywhere else. You just measure your sleeve progress from the underarm stitches that you cast on. So obviously you lay it down properly on a flat surface, but yeah, you can just measure from, from here to see how long your sleeve is. So I may have got a bit bored last night and finished off that sleeve while it was too dark to film. Um, but I've come to the end of the stocking stitch part of the second sleeve. So I'll just show you how we finish off the last couple of steps of this jumper, which is the decrease round for the cuff and then working the cuff in rib. So for the decrease round, um, it might help you to put in a stitch marker just to keep track of where we started and where we ended. And we're just, working the decrease round sort of starting at the middle of the underarm section that we cast on so just so the start of the round is sort of um on the underside of the wrist where you can't see it <laughs> um and then we're just going to knit two together knit one and then we're going to repeat that all the way round until we get back to the stitch marker so knit two together knit one knit two together knit one and then that will decrease for our sleeve so yeah just keep repeating knit two together knit one all the way around until you're back at the start okay so decrease round done uh back at the stitch marker and now we can just start working our rib for the cuff. So this is the final step before we finish the jumper. Um, 4.5 four, 4 mil needles again, or whichever needles you've been using for your rib. And we're just gonna take the stitches off the six mil needles and oh, just working our one by one rib again. And then we're going to work uh, seven centimeters of rib for the cuffs and then we can do our cast off. Yeah, knit one, purl one for this rib. Okay, and I'll leave you to it and meet you when we have finished our seven centimeters of rib for the cuff. Okay, I've finished the cuff. We've got seven centimeters of rib. 
we're ready to do the final stage of the jumper which is just casting off our cuff now uh, which is super exciting so yeah get your darning needle ready and leave a really nice long tail of yarn to cast off with and I'll show you how to do it so I'm just going to show you how to do the invisible cast off just like we did with the hem um, of course if you don't want to do that if you just want to cast off rib wise and just um, you know leave it like that that's absolutely fine but I think it's worth taking the extra time to do a nice a nice invisible cast off you know it's worth it if you're taking all the time to knit something um so yeah i've been working the cuff in a magic loop so i'm just gonna pull the back needle out um and yeah we're starting with a knit stitch here so that means we start with the the knit motions oh there we go so yeah go through the the back knit through the second stitch oh gosh i'm getting all caught up in my needles <laughs> and then we can knit through this first stitch and pull it off now we do the purl motions so purl wise through the second stitch Pull the yarn nice and tight and then we can go purl wise through the first stitch pull it nice and tight again <clears throat> and then we start again and we do knit wise so knit wise through the second stitch knit wires through the first stitch yeah, you can already see that nice invisible rib ending and then we're going to do purl wires so you can always tell if you ever get lost and you can't remember which part you're supposed to be doing if there's a purl stitch so this is the purl part of the rib then you do the the purl Purl movements, so purl through the second stitch and purl through the first stitch. And if there's a knit stitch first on the needle, this is the knit stitch, then you do the, the knit movements. So knitting through that second stitch on the needle and knit through the first. Oh my gosh, how exciting. This is the very final stage of the jumper and then we're all done. So now you're in a nice rhythm with your cast off. You can just keep going until you're completely done. And then I'll show you how to finish off the jumper. We're just gonna sew in and cut off any loose ends. Um, and then it's gonna be ready to block and wear, which is so exciting. Here we go. Um, and this is the first look at the final finished jumper. So exciting. Um, all, the, all the ends are cast off. Um, it's looking so gorgeous. I love it. Um, so happy with how this one came out. So all we need to do now is uh, flip it inside out and chop off those ends. Or, you know, if you want to, if it bothers you to have the knots, um, you can just sew them in. It does take a little bit longer though. Um, so you can see where I've already done this on the body panel. I've, uh, cut off the ends you can see the little knots so if you feel like that is going to be a problem for you it's totally fine if you want to sew them in um, and you can see i still need to do that on the sleeves so all i do is i'll just take the ends snip them off about you know half a centimeter um make sure everything's secure if there's anything loose you know just tie it up um, and then it's ready to block or if you're too excited, it's ready to wear straight away. <laughs> so here it is.
this. <laughs> the first time I'm putting it on. Absolutely in love with it. Ah, so gorge. I, I love the way the sleeves fit. I love that it's slightly cropped. Ah. Um, and the colours are amazing. Um, so I hope you all have so much fun knitting this pattern. Um, please tag me in your finished pictures. Um, I can't wait to see them all. And yeah, have an amazing time. Enjoy. <laughs>